Welcome back. Today I will be talking about supply shortages and why this could lead to a crisis. The video will be divided into multiple parts. First I want to talk about why there are shortages and how they occur, where we see these shortages and what the effects are on the economy, on companies and on inflation, and at last how we can prepare for the future. So let's begin. Why are there supply shortages? Shortages are caused by either too much demand or too little supply, or both. Often it is a combination of the two, but it also depends on the industry or the sector. One argument is that during the pandemic, demand for certain products and services was really low. Companies took this into account in the production process. When demand increased because we were allowed to do more things again and came out of lockdown, supply couldn't adjust as fast. But maybe more important, a lot of companies have collapsed and have not returned, especially the smaller ones. Most companies that did survive were only partially open and were extremely hurt as well. Now I'm not talking about the Amazons because they actually did pretty well during the pandemic. No, I'm talking especially about the smaller companies which are the backbone of our economy. Because the demand has increased as we are coming out of the pandemic and there are less businesses and less workers or people willing to work, there of course will be a shortage. Another reason has to do with input costs. Commodity prices have risen significantly over the last year and a half. Where we started the pandemic with negative prices in oil futures, we now breach multi-year highs in the price of oil. Take a look at the parabolic move in lumber earlier this year, or something that is widespread in the media today, the price of natural gas. These increases of course suck for people like you and me, but also for businesses. On one hand, where they can, they will incorporate these price increases in the price of their end products, which means we have to pay for this inflation. But often businesses can't raise prices or only marginally. You can think of supermarkets. This means profit margins are getting squeezed and some supermarkets, especially the smaller ones, will collapse because the bigger supermarkets have more room to play with. This is also what I have seen in the Netherlands, which is where I come from. And even the big supermarkets are now all admitting that they are forced to increase prices, something they originally were not planning on doing. But regardless of the prices, we actually see more empty shelves in the supermarkets already. In some countries like the UK, I think it's worse than in other countries. But my expectation is that the stocks in supermarkets are going to run out even faster. A third reason, and maybe the most important one, has to do with globalization and shipping. Because we are so dependent on Asian countries to produce our stuff, because we have outsourced, well, everything that we possibly can, we are now also seeing the downside of it. Production is lacking and transport has become extremely expensive, which has a direct effect on Western companies. I will talk more about this in a second. Now, where do we see these shortages? The semiconductor industry or the computer chip industry, for example, has an extreme supply shortage. This is actually the reason why you still don't have your PS5 or your new car. Toyota announced last month that it would slash its global production of cars by 40%. On the supply side, there are some technical complications and there is some politics involved as well. But the biggest problem is the huge increase in demand during the pandemic for phones, laptops, webcams, headsets, game consoles, etc. etc. But where do you think these semiconductors come from? Most of them come from Asia, which means they need to be shipped. And guess what? Shipping costs have gone through the roof. Look at this data. You now pay around $20,000 to get a container shipped from Asia to the US, a 400% increase year over year. Also, costs for trade lanes and prices for container vessels have gone ballistic. And in addition, Trans-Pacific capacity is increasingly stuck waiting at US destinations like Long Beach in LA, where a new record of 70 to 100 ships are currently waiting an average of 9 days to dock, and sometimes even 3 weeks. Ok, so then why are we not transporting by plane? Well, this is actually now considered by many businesses, because it is much quicker. The main problem used to be that air freight is very, very expensive, like 10 times more expensive. But due to the rising shipping costs, the differences are getting smaller. Another example is packaging. There is a major shortage in packaging materials, such as plastics, paper and metals. But also construction companies are suffering, as they are paying more for raw materials like lumber and are sometimes waiting months or weeks to receive what they need. 
And how about your Christmas products this year? People are already expecting these shortages and are therefore stocking up on these things. There are already shortages for turkeys, Christmas trees, gifts, toys, etc. Gary Grant, the founder of the UK toy shop The Entertainer, said in an interview he has had to stop importing giant teddy bears from China because their retail price would have had to double to add in higher freight costs. The last example I will discuss is the labor shortage. In the United States, for example, people received stimulus checks and other financial support and were motivated to not go to work or search for a job. And why would you if you can stay at home and receive money for free every month? Now these stimulus checks have run out, you would expect people to go back to work. But this is not everywhere the case. Due to the pandemic, people were fired, had to work from home, got a different job in a different field, or simply went back to their home country. And a lot of these people are just not returning. In the UK, for example, there's now a huge shortage for truck drivers and a lack of low paid migrant workers in general. In other sectors like the fast food industry, we still have a labor shortage as well, simply because the low wages are not attracting anyone. So these companies like McDonald's and, well, also Amazon came up with higher wages and sign on bonuses to attract more people. And we will have to see how that would turn out. I have already discussed a bit about rising prices, companies getting squeezed and businesses failing. But I want to talk about the economic story a bit more. What I expect to happen is that things will only get worse from this point. When people realize that things are running out of stock, especially with, well, the holidays around the corner, they will buy things in advance. We saw this in the UK where people were standing in long lines at gas stations the other day. This means not only less products are available, but also higher prices and so-called shrinkflation, where the price is not going up, but you're paying the same price for a smaller size or quantity. In addition, I think this will hurt the economy pretty badly and stagnate economic growth. Less shipping and less production means less jobs are needed. And a few days ago, the expectation by the Atlanta Fed for real US GDP growth in the third quarter of this year was already revised down from around 7% to only 1.3%. Now we know the Federal Reserve won't taper when bad numbers like these are reported, which is something I've said before. They will never really taper, let alone raise interest rates. Lastly, I want to talk about the future and how we can prepare for these shortages. It's a good idea to just stock up on, well, food you can store for a long time, like canned food or rice, sugar, salt, but also bottled water should really be on the top of your list. With regards to energy, you can think of candles. It's also a good thing to have enough medicine just in case. With the holidays around the corner, you can stock up on Christmas products. Some products are already running out right now, like I've said before, so make sure you're ahead of the curve. With regards to investments, I think it's good to think about inflation hedges, but I have a video about the topic on my channel already, which you can check out. Thanks for listening. Please let me know what you think about the current supply shortages and if you're noticing it in your daily life. Don't forget to comment, like and subscribe and have a nice rest of your day.